hey guys welcome back to the channel and in this video we are going to talk about manual scheduling so i'll show you how to do manual scheduling and we'll specifically look at two ways of manually scheduling the pods uh, one is node name property and the other property would we'll be seeing is node selector right so there are actually a couple of more uh, ways to schedule uh, pods uh, do manual scheduling of pods uh, but we'll be looking at them in the future videos right uh, for this video we'll just stay on node name and node selector so if you know i mean since in all our discussion of uh, kubernetes you know that uh, scheduling is taken care by uh, cube scheduler right so if i do cube ctl get pods hyphen and cube system cube system namespace so you see this is the cube scheduler uh, our pod which is running as a pod in cube system namespace and this takes care of all the scheduling right and in the background it actually uses an algorithm and it looks for a property in the uh, pod manifest file and if it's the property is not there it tries to schedule that particular pod right so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to go inside etc kubernetes and manifest folder and inside this if i mean i've already told you that cube scheduler controller and api server hcd they all run as static pods right and to create a static pod you need to put a file in the static path uh, directory so for me the path is etc kubernetes manifest right so inside this i have cube scheduler.yaml so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go inside cube scheduler dot yaml and i'm going to basically make an error inside this particular file so that my cube scheduler stops working right so i'll just say scheduler one and scheduler one so this file does not exist so this should break my cube scheduler so i don't need to do anything i just need to again do and it will break in maybe a minute or so you can see all right it has gone into their estate so this is what i wanted right so now if i do something like cube ctl run say pod one and hyphen hyphen image nginx so it has created the pod but if you look at the cube ctl get pods this pod will remain in pending state right because there is no scheduler to schedule this pod so if i does just to watch and watch it for say a few seconds you can see that it's already been 20 to 24 every two seconds it refreshes and this pod is still in pending state it's not getting scheduled because there is no scheduler to do that right so let's exit out of this now what i'm going to do is i'm going to schedule another pod using the node name property all right so what i'm going to do is cube ctl run pod 2 if an, if an image will use the same image nginx and we'll we need the manifest file for this so we're going to do a dry run output in yaml and we'll output it to pod2.yaml file now we'll go inside pod2.yaml we'll get rid of the things which you don't need creation time labels and all this property we don't need that and now what we are going to do is the property which we need is node name name remember that it's camel case right and for node name i want to schedule this on say worker one let's say right i'll save this uh, just to be sure you need to get nodes and see that okay so it's worker one cool so now what i'm going to do i'm going to do kubectl apply and pod2.yaml all right the pod is created now let's again do 
a watch on kubectl get pod you can see pod 2 is getting all right sorry i don't okay so i actually have made a mistake i have created this pod.yaml file inside the manifest folder and it has treated it as a static pod which we don't want right so what i'm going to do is all right that's a mistake on my part uh, i'm going to copy this pod2.yaml to my home right and then i'm going to get rid of this file uh, pod2.yaml all right so that's a mistake on my part and let's do kubectl get pods white status so you can see that the earlier it created something all right so now things are looking okay pod 2 is running on my worker 1 node right so this is what i wanted and pod 1 is still in pending state because there is still no scheduler to schedule it right all right so moving on so the next thing which i wanted to show and remember don't create any yaml file inside this directory because it will treat that as a static pod it will create try to create a static pod out of it right like it created for me pod 2 hyphen kubernetes master something like that it prefixed it right so i didn't notice that i was in Q -Cub, uh, my manifest directory so that that's the mistake i made so let's just get out of this directory and we only did that to basically break our scheduler all right so next uh, i want to show you the node selector property so for doing node selection you actually need a scheduler running uh, but you can schedule still care schedule manual schedule your pods based on labels when you have your scheduler running but still you can take uh, scheduling in your hand right and schedule pods based on the label of the nodes right so the first thing which i'm going to do is actually fix my uh, scheduler so we're going to go inside cube etc so i'm not going to go inside the directory this time i'm just going to vi the file directly cube scheduler so that i don't make that mistake like i did all right so now we just get rid of this one and this will fix the problem CTL, get pods, cube system namespace, and you can see cube scheduler is running again. All right, so although it's not in ready state, but it will be in ready state maybe in a minute or so. So we're, we're not worried about that. All right, so now next I'm going to do is I'm going to create another pod and use cube node selector property to schedule it. But before that, I need to actually label my pods right so if i do kubectl get nodes hyphen hyphen show labels so this will show all the labels which are there on my node right so i'll this time i'll schedule a pod on worker 2 so you can see all these labels are already present and these are also called well-known labels so you, there's a, a Kubernetes documentation page for these, right? So we are not going to use these well-known labels. We are actually going to create our own label. So to do that, we are going to do kubectl label nodes worker two this time. And the label which I want to provide it is a, I'll treat this as a superhero. So this, my node is a superhero and its power is say flight, right? So it can fly this superhero. So let's do that so you can see worker is labeled now so if you do kubectl describe node worker 2 you scroll up above in the label section you can see we have a label power is equal to flight all right cool let me clear the screen now i'm going to create another pod kubectl run pod 3 
and we'll use the same image nginx and again we need the manifest file so dry run and yaml and output it to part 3 dot yaml let's go inside part 3 dot yaml get rid of the things which you don't need labels just need the name and let's get rid of these all right so now the property which we need is node selector and make sure you have the proper indentation when you're working with yaml and the labels which we had was power and the power which my node has was flight right so now when we'll create this part this part will be scheduled on worker node 2 right so let's save this file and do kubectl apply part 3 dot yaml all right the part is created let's do kubectl get pods hyphen o wide so we can see where is where a part 3 has gone and you can see a part 3 has gone on worker node 2 although it's creating but as you can see that it has been scheduled on worker node 2 so now i hope the difference is pretty clear and you know how scheduler actually works behind the scene so scheduler actually looks for a field node name right so any pod which does not have the node name field scheduler tries to schedule that right so that's that's how even when our scheduler was broken we were able to schedule using the node name but when your scheduler is broken you cannot use node selector to schedule the pod right for that you actually need to have your scheduler running but you can do selective scheduling using node selector suppose i mean you can apply uh, labels to say you have hundreds of worker nodes right and you can apply the labels on those hundreds of uh, uh, different labels on different nodes and then you can do selective scheduling based on your labels right so suppose you have 10 nodes of one type and 10 nodes of another type so you can actually uh, restrict your scheduling on say just 10 nodes and the rest of the 10 nodes will uh, the pods will not be scheduled right so that that's what you can do with node selector uh, probably this is it for this video in the next video we'll look for node affinity we'll look into low node affinity and node anti-affinity that is uh, going into more granular uh, uh, scheduling so that would be very interesting and it's a little complex when you come to node affinity and node anti-affinity right so but they are very interesting concept and they do get featured in exam the CKA exam they do get in right especially these uh, node name node selector node affinity and node anti-affinity so you should be well aware of these four properties of uh, a pod right or communities all right so this is it for this video guys i hope you like the video please do subscribe to the channel before leaving and thank you for watching